Hello everyone, thank you for watching a, another episode of Vegan Police TV. This episode I'm talking about something that is popular at the moment and that is the uh, proposal or the statement or just trying to get his head in the in the paper is another 15 minutes of fame. Uh, Nick Xenophon's plans to reintroduce dairy and you know little milk bottles into uh, Australia's school. So without further ado let's get on with it now this uh comment a couple of things politics politics is a game where people uh they're aiming for the most amount of things that they can say that they're looking to do now uh nick xenophon i'm not sure if he holds the balance of power or, or one of the the group that holds the balance of power in the senate uh, who knows he's just going for something populist because of the, uh, the the dairy drama segment that was on Four Corners or Landline or something like that on the ABC last night. So he's just looking to to keep his name in, in the press. And he because he's got a few more, he's got senators now and he's an official political party, he's moving away from his more uh, roguish stance, which was his uh, the soapbox issue that he did have about, uh, what was it? Uh, about what was it a royal? I think it was a royal commission into poker machines or something like that. But something that he wanted to do with regards to poker machines. Uh, so yeah, it, it's more that he's moving down a, a path of trying to keep himself relevant. Uh, so what you know? Why? Why is dairy being targeted? Because farmers have turned around and claiming that they're losing money because the global milk prices dropped and all that. So he thinks that hey, yes we can prop up the dairy industry by you know forcibly you know buying milk and forcibly giving it to the children or compulsorily giving it to children in primary school as well remember this is the th same thing that japan does with whale meat they prop up the industry by buying it to give to school children where's the difference you know we, we condemn japan for doing that for going whaling and yet here we are saying hey yes here's this this ailing industry let's go and uh you know, let's go and prop it up by, by government funds. Look what's happened to the car industry in Australia. That was propped up and propped up and propped up. And, you know, there's no car industry in, in Australia anymore due to poor management. Uh, why should dairy be the only primary production industry in Australia that, that's propped up like that? Uh, uh, what was it? Our beetroot one has gone pear-shaped. Uh, pretty much every uh, fruit or, you know, every uh primary production thing that's not part of animal agriculture in this country is in dire straits why because unfortunately the lobby groups aren't as powerful as what the dairy industry is or the meat industry to be able to prop it up and to be able to go and cry poor to the government and and get increased funding well this is the thing is that like everything else it's consumer demand that has brought this you know uh pardon me things to be the way that they are now so uh, you know obviously that's not really relevant to to those who are vegan because obviously we're not consuming dairy it's, it's the thing is that uh animal you know consumers want something that is always cheap they want the cheapest product that they can to make their dollar stretch further to make their budget last longer so that in turn has led the the big chains to produce their um home brand or you know um, what do they call it blank label or black label or, or um Home, uh, home label or it's something anyway the, the the milk that they have their home brand products so we, we see it with uh you know all their home brand tomatoes their home brand this their home brand that so their own brand that's it uh products so they're all majority of them are made overseas and imported so when we buy that we're taking money away from australian farmers it doesn't matter whether it's, it's corn whether it's uh you know tomatoes whether it's macadamia nuts or whatever it is so there's that the other thing too is that with a lot of the products is that a majority of it gets exported which has created that false demand here uh in so so instead of you know turning around and dairy you know dairy industry for example and saying hey yes we're not going to worry about exporting stuff we're not going to worry about focus on exports of anything we're just going to keep everything for the local market while that would have changed the way that their production they wouldn't have got so big the uh, there wouldn't have been the humongous pressure put on it uh, so that, and 
by no means, please do not think for a minute that I'm condoning what the dairy industry does or anything like that. I'm just trying to give a bit of a background, a bit of an understanding of of the, the industry and how you know it's literally dug its own, dug dug a hole for itself. So, with Nick Xenophon doing that, he's uh, trying to remain more, you know, trying to remain re- relevant because he's going to have a lot of competition from uh, the likes of Pauline Hanson in the Senate. Uh, and uh, some of the other independent senators who are going to be pushing a more uh, regional or rural focus or rural position that they want to, ha- you know, they want to get Australia back. They want to bring farming back. They want to bring in all, all this sort of stuff. So he's going to be facing a lot of challenges from that. So this is just him trying to get in first by saying, hey, yes, oh, you know, I'm promoting this. So, hey, look what I'm doing for this country. Well, no, he, really, he's only doing it for his own ego. Uh, if he was looking to do it for his own country, he'd be turning around and saying, "Well, let's you know, let's provide government subsidised meals for all schools using fresh products." Don't worry, no, I'm not talking about meat or anything like that because they get enough government subsidies. All the good quality stuff gets gets exported anyway. So why would why does he turn around and say, "Yes, all right, you know, we'll bring dairy in. Let's all, we're also going to subsidise, uh, you know, bananas, apricots." Whatever else, you know, anything that you can find that's produced here, that the industry is is struggling to stay afloat. So it's the thing. So yes, uh, it, it it's just an, a populist message from him. He's trying to get his uh, you know head in the paper. He doesn't have any control anywhere. So how much he'd be able to do it is is questionable. And the other thing too due to the way the separation of, of powers is between the state and commonwealth governments or state and federal government is that I'm not sure if he'd be able to do it because he's a federal politician you know he's in the senate so I'm not sure if you would be able he would they would be able the, you know the, the commonwealth would be able to legally do it now we saw that the uh, school chaplaincy project uh, that I think it was the Abbott government brought in uh, that was challenged in the in the High Court and found to be unconstitutional. Uh, how can the Commonwealth do that? So unless they're giving away free milk, to you know, what if the school doesn't want to buy the milk? So is there going to be any implications for the school not buying it with regards to government funding? And so it's a whole lot of, of, of things like that. So for all those vegans that are jumping up and down saying, oh, this and that, he wants to do this, he wants to do that, look a bit deeper into what's being said, what's being done, have an understanding of politics of how... Uh, what levels of government can do things with regarding to what portfolio they have. Yes, there's a a federal um, uh, minister for education. That's not part of the the Commonwealth's control because the Constitution doesn't say anything about that. That's why there's state health ministers and there's state health um, state health ministers, state education ministers and they're all state schools, state primary schools and state high schools because the states run that. Now, would the states hand over power to the Commonwealth? I doubt it because the with the states having the schooling system, that's a good way for them to, to get more money from the Commonwealth as well. So um, who knows? So honestly, I wouldn't be worrying too much about what Nick Xenophon does. He's only one politician. Uh, you know, if, if other politicians haven't done it, the Nats haven't done it in the past, uh, and you sh- I can guarantee you they'd be copying pressure uh, to to do something like this. So if they haven't floated the idea or they haven't considered the idea, or even mentioned it, it's not something that anyone needs to worry about. So as I said before, it's just Nick Xenophon trying to get his, uh, you know, increase 15 minutes of fame and maybe trying to one-up the Greens or, or trying to one-up one of the other uh, independent senators. So anyway, that was my thoughts on that one. Uh, leave your comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe. Uh Back your email address in the newsletter. There's a MailChimp thing down below uh, and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, thank you for watching and I look forward to having you join me on another episode of Vegan Police TV. Bye for now. Oops. And here we go. Ah, uh, yeah, It's not turning off again. So hang on. We're turning off hopefully.